understanding each other, disagreements, maybe politicians, international relations, or even celestial bodies, things that we have yet to experience. One core skill unites these, perspective taking. And today, I'm gonna to describe that. Yo, Ryan O, behavior analyst and creator, all things behavior analysis on this channel. We nerd out on psychology. Today, I wanna to explain the importance and how one may approach perspective taking through a behavioral lens. So. What is perspective taking? I stumbled into a talk online and a series of papers in graduate school that led me to believe that this is the most important skill to acquire to be an effective practitioner and generally speaking, just a good human being. A lot of hyperbole, yes, but listen, it's super important. Think about the activities that you engage in today, what we engage in society, from your day-to-day -day interactions, our educational institutions, our political leaders, our international relations, to social media. We are communicating from a perspective and oftentimes trying to understand another person's perspective. Now, psychology has attempted to understand this in many ways, most often through trying to examine and interpret people's mental states. I have a whole video on the issue further explaining, I'll link down below, but in short, mental states are assumed and have yet to be found. They're at best an explanation of a series of behaviors and environmental events that happen to us or continue to happen to us. And labeling these behavioral patterns and constructs like the mind have gotten us nowhere. So why not take a step back, not infer that there's something else there and just focus on what actually is there, what we can measure and observe, which is a number of things such as environmental changes, biological changes, historical variables, and ecological variables. These tangible things that are rooted in this world and are not made up. So the most popular construct related to perspective taking skills is called theory of mind, T-O-M for short. It was coined in 1978 by Premack and Woodruff in a study in which they tried to determine whether chimpanzees had the ability to understand human goals through the selection of a picture that corresponded to the solution of the problem. Now they outlined five levels. Level one, simple visual perspective taking, which is just understanding that an object can be seen from multiple perspectives. So while you see the top of the hat, I actually see the other side of the hat. Level two, complex visual perspective taking, which entails understanding that people can see the same object or event in different ways. So it's not just understanding that there's two sides to something, but that you are seeing it from one direction with the RVCA and I'm seeing it from the back with the logo and et cetera. Level three, which is understanding the principle that seeing leads to knowing. This is pretty simple. If someone came in here and grabbed this and hit it, say, uh, behind the camera, and I was not present, you would be able, as an observer of that, to be able to know where it is. You know where it is. But me being removed, I would not. Level four is predicting actions on the basis of a person's knowledge, which describes the ability of a person to accurately predict the behavior of another based on the understanding of what they had seen. So in that scenario that I just said, in which someone comes in here, hides it, you're in the room and you can see it and I can't, you would predict that I would be looking at wherever it was last, perhaps on the shelf back here, rather than where it was actually hidden. And then level five is understanding false beliefs, which describes the ability of a person to accurately predict what another is likely to do based on another person's limited vantage. You would actually be able to predict me looking in one place as opposed to where it's actually at, hidden behind, say, the camera. Some of the main things researchers have looked at are when and how people gain the ability to behave with respect to other people, such as anticipating these beliefs and desires or understanding false beliefs, which a simple example of this might be to include an observer, Mark, who sees Joe place a drink in the refrigerator and leave the room. Subsequently, Mark sees another person, Jenny, walk into the room and consume the drink. Mark would predict that Joe then walks back into the room and he will behave as if there is a drink still in the refrigerator, even though he, Mark, knows that the drink is really gone. In lay terminology, Mark's behavior might be described as taking Joe's perspective. Without this ability, Mark would behave towards the refrigerator as if it were empty and would predict that Joe would do the same. The ability to better predict and behave towards others based on their different histories brings a multitude of benefits to the person who can take perspectives. This is just one example stolen directly from my thesis on the topic, which I'm gonna link down below. Completed it while at the Florida Institute of Technology studying Yep, behavior analysis. So that's the history and the why I alluded to, it seems to be the basis of not only communicating, but understanding others. The things that we do daily and some of us, like behavior analysts in society, pay to do effectively for others. But these skills are also the basis for empathy, the building blocks for empathy, something we at oftentimes are in short supply of. So let's jump into an example. When a person feels another's pain. If Joe runs, falls, and scrapes his elbow, he may wince at the pain from the injury while a tear rolls down his cheek. Sometime in the future, let's say Joe is hiking with Jenny and she scrapes her elbow on a rock. Jenny engages in similar facial express expressions, the wincing, and begins to sob. Because Joe has the perspective taking ability, the similarity between the sight of Jenny's scratch, the wincing, and the tears, and his own reaction from earlier, transfers those stimulus functions, those, that pain, 
from his history, his own experience, to the elbow scratch in the current situation of Jenny. Not only is he likely to more accurately predict her behavior, it is more likely that her pain will be aversive to him or unpreferred, right? And he will behave to alleviate her pain. The fact that Joe actually feels the pain is the critical feature of the phenomenon referred to as empathy. So how do behavior analysts look at this? Well, one way, and that's the one that I'm operating from in my thesis, is through relational frame theory. First, I and you. I, the speaker, you, the listener in this situation. Then there's here, there, this spatial component. I am here while your here is actually there and your there is actually my here. And then there's now then, the distinction between current and historical context, context such that the speaker can explain behavior that is currently occurring as here and now versus things that have occurred there and then. So if I was talking about myself in the past, I'd be talking about this then and their situation in which I was behaving in some past context. And you could probably do the same. Think of something in the past, you're behaving with this there, then relationship. And it's through the combination of all these, the I, you, here, there, now, then relations that form like the complex real world situations in which we perspective take day to day. And because the speaker is constant in this situation, me here, the I, here, now relations, this sort of ability to engage in this sort of languaging what we call dialectic frames form the foundation of perspective taking. So perspective taking is the ability due to languaging skills of a person to engage in these relational discriminations such that they can reverse the relations and combine them, engage with the stimulation of another based on that other person's experiences, at least to some exclusion of the speaker's experience and behave more effectively towards the other having done so. So for example, I is always from the perspective of here and not from another perspective there. Therefore, RFT suggests that the many different questions inherent in common verbal interactions establish our ability to do this at a very young age and take other people's perspectives. Now, common questions that might result in this sort of skills developing are, what are you doing now? Or what are you doing then? What were you doing then? It is through these questions that most people learn the foundation to form perspectives. Some of us better than others. And it's something you have to work on, continually prime. So what's so new here? Or there, right? Well, this approach is rooted in a natural science world in which we can start to analyze and teach skills without the old model that inferred these mental states. It's more parsimonious. That is, it requires less to explain the phenomenon, which is central to scientific practice and explanations. And there's evidence that this approach is not just conceptual, but maybe a great way to understand perspective taking skills. I'll link my full thesis down below if you're interested in that and some other nerdy reads if you want to learn more. But I hope this video will help you rethink how you operate in the world rather than asking things like, how does your mind operate? Or what is it that is in his mind or her mind or their mind? You could look at things as the question of like, under what conditions do you think that perspective shaped up? So many of our interactions are to understand others' behavior motives and framing your position is in ways that makes your perspective more clear and rid of assumptions can be a way to make the world, I think, just a little bit of a better place. And now you have a way to look at it through this IU here, there, and now then set of relations. Sharing a more naturally rooted approach like this or modeling it will help others and yourself from falling into the traps or these pitfalls of theory of mind and other approaches that require these hypothetical constructs. I don't know, it just kind of makes sense, right? I like to think that we could learn from this body of research and restructure society in small ways that were that create this more empathetic uh, situation for all of us. This research path is trying to show that this actually may be possible and perhaps one day we will achieve something like that a better world through behavior analysis. So this video is brought to you by patrons, people like you there <laughs> that support efforts, um, my efforts financially. Um, for three years now, I've actually developed uh, the content on this channel and lost money, like actually lost money creating these videos. Um, and I think they're super important. The field is important and there's a lot of important people doing important things I like to share. So if you're interested in supporting, top link down below. I hope you learned something. Like, share, subscribe. Like it actually does make a difference. My stuff like this is exclusively on YouTube now, henceforth. And that's your daily BA.